Well, thank you. This is a tough, uh, tough spot to be in. We weren't supposed to be in this spot, I believe. There was another group who was going to come up and kind of warm you all up. But, uh, you know, we got pulled into it, so here we are. Um, as part of this panel, uh, we've got two esteemed colleagues here who are, are prepared to essentially discuss the role of technology in where we're going with airlines or the airlines of the future. Um, the first guest is, as you can see on Skype, unfortunately he was, uh, came down with the flu. Uh, he was supposed to be here in, in person, but he came down with the flu, and I guess to protect all of us, he stayed where he was. Um, and that is, he goes by the name of Srini. Srini is the CIO of Qatar Air Airways. And uh, so, please welcome Srini. Thank you very much, John, and my greetings to the audience. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Our second guest uh, comes to us. He actually is here. Um, he comes to us from Air India, where he is the general manager of revenue and pricing. Um, it is Alok, Alok Singh. So please welcome Alok Singh. I agree. So I think what we wanted to do is essentially um, the purpose of this is to, to talk about the role of technology and where does technology play. Um, technology is more of a, an enabler of what we do in the industry, um, how we run our businesses, how we, it, it supports our operations. Technology in itself is not you know, the end game. It's what it does for us and how it, how it enables us to do things that, uh, that we've never done before. I think there's a lot of uh, new technology that's, that's on the market now that, that wasn't there, you know, five years ago. And just as we saw with, say, the common use uh, 15 years ago and how it really impacted, uh, you know, the way that we, we run our operations and enable our, our customers, um, I think we're on the cusp of something new. Um, and so what I'd like to be able to do here is just kind of offer the questions out to our panel. And, and get your or their perspective to share with you in terms of where they think technology is going. So the first question I'd like to ask is really one of, um, what are the new technologies that are significant technologies that are, are coming forward and how will they impact the, the business? So I'll open it up and I'll ask Srini to, uh, to address that question, please. Right, so, so John, just, just repeat that question again. I couldn't hear you clearly. I'm sorry, could you ask that question again? Yeah, yeah. So what question did you ask me? Just repeat the question. <laughs> okay. So, so from your perspective, what are the uh, significant technology trends um, that are affecting the airline industry um, now and moving forward? Right. So, so, so John, my answer would, uh, would be not just focused on technology, because I think there are a few other things that are also equally significant, which are happening. But let me start by, by focusing on what I see as important technologies which have promise and potential and which need to be uh, you know, assessed carefully to, to assess benefits. Clearly, uh, big data is one of those. Why I personally think big data has, has enormous potential is because uh, the volume and velocity of data that we are dealing with, and I think, I, I think that's something that is common knowledge amongst the entire audience, and Alok has a different perspective on it, uh, um, given that Alok is, is not in the IT world. Um, but again, as Srini was saying, that it's more around, you know, it's, it, again, it's not just technology that we're talking about. So Alok, would you... Yeah. Uh, can you guys hear me at the back? Okay. Uh, well, as John said, technology is really an enabler. It's not an end in itself. Uh, my perspective is, <sighs> is that, uh, you know, technology and aviation, there are about two or three uh, areas where technology can be leveraged by an airline. Uh, one is, is on the aircraft design side, on the engine side, on the aircraft systems. And we often tend to underestimate that because technology here has been evolutionary. And we have not seen uh, uh, you know, the kind of uh, uh, revolutionary uh, things coming in. Uh, as you would on the on the IT services side, uh, but you cannot underestimate that. And and I can I can uh, give you the example of of Air India. Uh, we are undergoing a 
uh, financial and operational restructuring. Uh, at the heart of the program is an aircraft, is the uh, 787. And, uh, and uh, what this enables you to do is, is serve markets more efficiently uh, with less cost. Uh, uh, it is right sized for the markets that uh, you know, we are deploying it on. So, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's really an important part. And in terms of, in terms of uh, financial numbers, this will yield you much more than anything else uh, on, the, on the IT services side. Uh, um, uh, the other example I can give you is, is, is in terms of, let's say, on engine technology. Uh, engines are getting better, more efficient, quieter. Uh, I wonder if you know that there are in the world today about 250 airports which have a night curfew, some form of a night curfew. Uh, just imagine, and half of them are in Europe, just imagine if, if uh, these curfews could be relaxed because many of them were put in place 50 years ago. Uh, engine technology that you have today is so quiet and efficient that uh, I think there is, it's time to relook at, uh, you know, at some of these uh, barriers that we have put in. The amount of efficiencies that can come in, the amount of cost savings that can happen is going to be enormous. The other area, uh, in my view, is, is on the on the airport processes side, on the uh, customer facing side, uh, uh, border controls, uh, IT has a huge role to play here. Um, uh, in flight, on board, um, customer information, entertainment, that domain. And I, I'm sure, uh, you know, we are going to talk more about it later. Uh, the third aspect, and I think that is what Srini was uh, uh, touching on, is on the, on the back end, if I can uh, you know, use that term, uh, the airline side of, of things. And uh, uh, it's strange that, uh, that as airlines, we sit on so much data, uh, but we actually don't know what to do with it. A part of it is, of course, uh, uh, the fact that um, our systems are legacy systems. Uh, but if you look at the stuff that companies like Google, TripIt, uh, Amazon, the same data, the amount of stuff that is being done is, is amazing. And we are far from there. So my hope is that technology can, can deliver some kind of a solution where, where we can uh, utilize the data that we already have, that we already capture in, in uh, building loyalties in, uh, uh, in, uh, on the revenue management side. There's enormous amount of work to be done. All right. Thank you. Um, I think with that, then the, then the next question that, that comes to mind here is um, how, does, how does technology really drive differentiation? How can it drive differentiation? And how, how does it drive, say, customer loyalty? It's to me. That's not uh, to you me. Can, you can answer this one first. <laughs> uh, uh, again, I think. Uh, this seems very contradictory. On one hand, the airline business is getting commoditized. It's about, especially in markets like India, where, where it's getting so price-driven that sometimes people feel that there is no use for all these uh, back-end technologies that you have. You just need to offer, be able to offer a very low price and you're done. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Uh, we need to be able to differentiate between the products that we offer. And uh, again, this is one area where technology should be able to deliver. All right. How are we doing with, with Srini? All right. OK. So um, I guess at this point, it'd be good to kind of open up this session to yourselves and find out what kind of questions you have um, relative to this topic. So do I have any, any questions? Be shy. All right. So Srini was going into a conversation around big data, and you just mentioned that um, one of the areas that we have so much information today. How do you think big data plays? And it's a question I get asked all the time from from airlines when I'm talking to them. And you know, a lot of them are saying, "Well, what does it mean to me? What does big data do for me? How do I implement it? What you know, what value do I gain from it?" So do you have any, any thoughts yeah. around that? Uh, you know, again, my, my perspective is from the revenue management 
side of things. And I, I have a presentation tomorrow. I'm going to share some, uh, some of these thoughts uh, in that presentation. Uh, but on the, on the revenue management side, I think we are being limited very greatly by distribution. Uh, a lot of stuff has happened in the last 10 years on the RM side, on the pricing side. Uh, but the fact is that today, 85% of the point of sale happens at, uh, happens at an indirect channel, where the airline is not in, in control of things. Uh, how do you sell ancillaries, for instance? How do you do upsells? Uh, revenue management forecasting tools, uh, these, are, these are now you know, diminishing returns are applying there. Uh, the, wh what you are dealing with is, is kind of a faceless demand. You are dealing with aggregates, numbers. You need to be talking about individuals. You need to be looking at, uh, uh, you know, targeting, targeting people as an individual, not as a group. Can, can technology offer that kind of a, a solution? Uh, and if it can, then I think the biggest beneficiary will be will be revenue management. Like like for instance, uh, at the heart of revenue management is is price discrimination, which means that you uh, you micro segment your market, build fences around it, and you offer uh, you offer a a price which is uh, which is just right for that customer group. Uh, we are now seeing a convergence of distribution of uh, search, CRM. Uh, if that happens, uh, then it throws up some fascinating possibilities. Uh, can you, can you uh, segment your market so finely that you reach out to an individual customer? Can you price your product based on uh, an individual customer's needs and his ability to pay? Because uh, you know, if you go back to your uh, high school uh, economics, uh, there is something called consumer surplus. Consumer surplus is money left on the table uh, because as a, as a producer, you weren't able to get the price that a customer was willing to pay you. And that's the dilemma that we face on the airline side. Uh, if, I, if I price a product too high, you might drive the customer away. If you price it too low, then there is consumer surplus. So if you, can, if you can segment and if you can reach out to, uh, to people as individuals, then, uh, then they, theoretically there can be zero consumer surplus. You can extract everything from, from, a, from a customer. And I think that is, is the new frontier for, for revenue management that should be enabled by technology Maybe the first steps are being taken by, by IATA's uh, NDC, which we should see kicking in maybe in a year's time. And uh, fascinating possibilities up ahead. Yeah, I'm absolutely there. Okay. So, so we have Srini back on, on audio here. And uh, one of the things I think we're, where you left off, now this is one of the things Srini was warning against, that, that uh, if we went Skype, then there was risks, and, and we encountered those risks. But Srini is back. And so, Srini, you were in the middle of, uh, of talking about the, 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 uh, the trends, the business trends, and, and how um, some of the technology would impact that. So um, would you like to, to go back and revisit that one? Sure, absolutely. But just on a lighter note, uh, with the utmost respect to my Microsoft colleagues, I would say Skype let me down, and I did try rebooting. <laughs> That's on a lighter note. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it let us all, all right, down, so, so, <laughs> <laughs> let, let, me, let me get back to the question. Uh, and you know, interestingly, uh, I, I have just the right person. So I, I, you know, I've been I've been kind of reading up obviously about big data, and and I obviously meet uh, meet suppliers who have a lot of hype to share, but but some substance as well. I think some inescapable facts are. That uh, and this is the statistic that I was about to share when I lost connectivity. There are 2.5 exabytes of data being created every day. Was created in, in 2012. That's just just 2.5 into 10 raised to the power 18. The fact is that we are 
we are in every industry, this is true of every industry, we are dealing with a higher volume, a higher velocity uh, of data than we had ever imagined. So, so, you know, when I look at it from inside IT, every 1.2 years, we're now doubling our storage, which used to be about four years or five years earlier. Now, if I, if I just look at revenue management and try and marry that with the opportunity offered by big data, currently, we use, or the applications used for revenue management, and my colleague from Air India would probably be able to verify that. The most predominantly used ones are Pros and Air Max from Sabre. Typically, you do a nightly forecasting, which is once a day. So what I would call a low-frequency forecast. Big data finally gives you the opportunity to do a more real-time, high-frequency now casting. And the term now casting is something I borrowed from McKinsey. But basically, the, the, the philosophy and the opportunity and the potential is that your ability to change your business levers, in this case, change your price or manage your inventory closer to real time is enormously greater because today, if you take four hours or five hours to do a produce a forecast for all your OND pairs, for a carrier like us, for instance, tomorrow you could, there is the promise that tomorrow you could do this in minutes and seconds. My personal view, Technology will get us there, and I don't think technology would be the disabler. However, there are challenges that remain. Would we actually have the ability and the talent available to analyze that information at that high speed? And would we have the talent available to make the right decisions? Would we have enough people trained to be able to do that? Is is definitely a challenge I foresee. But I do see big, big potential in big data uh, to, to dramatically change things. My personal view, I also think mobility is still to be fully exploited. Now, let me try and marry uh, mobility and, 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 and big data and combine the two and envision an airport of the future. So, so, John, just as a matter of debate, if you were constructing an airport five years from now, would you put, put common use infrastructure or kiosks at the airport? Or would you actually depend on the fact that practically everybody has a mobile device there are mobile check-in apps. There are, you know, there are mobile apps which can let you do any and everything that you do today with a with a common use system or or a kiosk. So why would you ever design that uh, new airport five years in with common use infrastructure and 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 kiosk? I'm certain that this would be a debate for anyone wanting to design an airport of the future. I, I think that's an so, excellent. So, uh, that's an excellent point. Right. I'm sorry, Srini. So, so I, you know, I was just echoed. I, I just thought of this because you started off, I think, 15 years ago, you know, a common use terminals or common use equipment offered as a great opportunity, an opportunity for benefit. So in my personal opinion, the potential of mobility, and mobility has relatively matured compared to big data, uh, uh, the potential for mobility is still to be fully exploited by organizations, particularly airlines. Whether that mobility is the consumer mobility part of the story, or, or the workforce mobility part of the story. There's still much more that can be done to gain immediate business benefit. Airport dispatchers, cabin crew serving, uh, potential to use it for pilots as uh, electronic flight bags, uh, you know, catering companies. I, I can think of numerous examples where, where uh, the potential of mobility can be exploited. The third area that may not directly be visible to a business, but nevertheless is important for, for, uh, for an industry, which is as cost sensitive as IT, as airlines are, is cloud and virtualization. So, so cloud definitely offers the potential for cost saving, if nothing else. Challenges remain. Uh, the hype is ahead of the reality, as always. But I do think there is promise in that, because there are some obvious winners there. You know, economies of scale, uh, 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 you know, probably manpower savings and cost savings on that front. So th that is another area of promise which I would watch very, very, very carefully and, and seek to exploit uh, when the opportunity is right. I, I also think in terms of technology, there is another area. So if we, if, we, if we look at how human beings communicate, I think we communicate best through when we talk to each other, for instance, or when we see each other and read each other's expressions.
it's, it's, it's been all about keyboards. So we, we use keyboards to talk to machines, whether they're virtual keyboards or physical keyboards. I, for one, I, for one, am hoping that big data itself and advancements in voice recognition technology would actually change the man-machine interface and make it more natural, which is how human beings communicate today. That is the same way human beings may end up communicating with machines. So that's something to watch over the next four or five years. I've, I've, I've read that IBM has already announced, uh, you know, uh, the ability to read your brain. We have seen, and I'll share just one example of this man-machine interface. We have seen something like Kinect, which, you know, our kids use as gaming devices. For those of you uh, who have used the Xbox, you would relate to Kinect, which is a motion sensing device. We actually trialed Kinect and motion sensing to do crew uniform measurement. And it may surprise you that for male crew, we actually managed to achieve about 98, 99% uh, you know, accuracy of uniform mm -hmm. measurement. So that's another example uh, of, of technology that can you know, provide small benefits. Um, there is NDC, and I, I think when I got back on, I, 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 I thought I heard a Alok talk about NDC. Definitely, NDC is not about technology. I think NDC is about a different model. But NDC finally has the promise, if nothing else, to save us very, very, very vital dollars for all of us who are always challenged by distribution costs. And I, maybe Alok was saying the same thing. I couldn't hear him clearly. So I, I would say those are areas to watch out for. Very good. So, so what I'd like to do is, again, offer to the group, uh, based on what you've heard so far, and any questions that come out of this? I'd just like to understand, uh, hear your view on the role of satellite, because we hear a lot about a satellite being able to deliver entertainment to aeroplanes, except it's very costly at the moment. Uh, is there going to come a time, and your view is that no, that mass appeal or the mass audience, uh, it, sending first release Hollywood movies, for instance, through the air to aeroplanes, are we going to skip that totally and, and not, not have a satellite delivery system to aeroplanes and go straight to something that you were talking about before? What's your view? That was more from a, a pricing perspective. That how can airline pricing is about uh, price discrimination as opposed to product differentiation. You offer the same seat to different people at different price points. Okay. Uh, so uh, what I was mentioning to you was, was can an airline in the future using leveraging technology be able to offer uh, a price which is just right for a person rather than uh, you know, uh, a kind of a segment which is very large in size. On the, on the question of uh, satellite televisions, I don't know very much about it. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, that on one side is the is the is the differentiation part, and uh, airlines would like to offer services which are uh, which are not offered by competitors. But there is also a cost aspect to it, and uh, if you if you look at many markets, including uh, the India market, uh, where in fact we happen to be the only domestic player which offers in-flight entertainment on. Uh, about 60% uh, of the routes. We are actually thinking of uh, pulling that out because there's a huge cost associated with in-flight entertainment. So unless things like satellite television and even net access uh, uh, in-flight can be offered at, at, a, uh, at, a, at the right price, um, airlines are not in a financial shape to be able to, to afford technology which comes at that price. So uh, we have to be conscious of that. And, and this is not just about satellite. It's also about uh, IT solutions. One, for instance, one angst that we all have about uh, GDS distribution is the high cost. Look at the kind of profits that GDS companies are making. And look at the kind of uh, uh, you know, profits the airlines are making. It's clearly out of line. And which is why, which is why we are banking heavily on, on NDC, because that, that will perhaps throw open uh, this domain to, to many IT players. And we expect newer IT companies to come in with 
uh, with uh, with better priced products and uh, uh, hopefully the cost of distribution won't be what we shell out today um Srini, so if i can if i can rephrase the question um Oh. I, I believe that the question was around in, uh, in terms of in-flight entertainment and, and connectivity on the aircraft, is there, is there a chance that we were bypassing um, satellite connectivity to, to just onboard or, or direct? Or, or direct uh, you know, direct? you know, okay. All right. Sorry, go on. So that was it. So is, it, is there a chance that it would just go straight to, to um, customers on board rather than going through, you know, the satellite connectivity on the plane for in-flight as well, you know, being able to pass media, entertainment me uh, media um, to passengers directly as opposed to going through satellite in the way it's done today. Do you see the possibility of that happening? Is that a fair assessment? Okay. So your thoughts on that? So, 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 so my thoughts on this are that uh, the economics will drive it. And I, I, I could faintly hear Alok, but I think he was trying to make the same point, that currently the economics do not absolutely do not, uh, you know, uh, justify that in the sense airlines are, are not able to afford that. And I think uh, 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 Alok alluded to very low profitability, that is if any profit at all is made by airlines. So currently, even if technology is available to offer that connectivity or offer a ground-like experience, it is extremely expensive, and airlines would typically have no choice but to pass that expense on to, on to consumers or passengers, which wouldn't be, uh, you know, palatable in all cases. So I personally think the economics are an inhibitor. Would I bet on that technology becoming more affordable in the future? I would certainly bet on it because technology in general uh, advances in a direction where, uh, you know, per dollar spent, you get more, whether it's storage or server computing power or bandwidth. So, 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 five years from now, uh, you know, would you have the same experience here as you have on ground? Possibly, yes. Today, it is unaffordable. All right. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. So, I'll open it up. Are there any other questions uh, that we'd like to pose here? So, I have one that that really talks to, w with the implementation of again looking at technology driving the business or helping to enable the business, what does it do, what does technology of the future do to how the operations run today? What, what's, how do business processes change? How, do, how does the, uh, the interaction with your customers fundamentally change based on the, the types of technology that are available? So, Srini, can so I yeah, sure. So I was wondering whether you wanted me to answer that or, or look. All right. So, sorry, can I speak? So, so, the, so the question was, is what, how, does, how does the business operations fundamentally change based on, say, the, the, the um, bringing in um, uh, big data, you know, data business analytics or customer analytics versus, you know, bringing in mobile technology and really incorporating that into the way that business is conducted today. Um, how, do, how do you see the change in operations and what kinds of things do airlines need to think about when they start looking at implementing those types of technologies? So, so, so let, me, let, me, let me take one, one example uh, uh, and, and, and try and illustrate the point. Mobility, as I said earlier, definitely has a has a uh, you know enormous potential, and actually is available now to be exploited to change operations significantly. Take someone like a maintenance engineer who has to turn around uh, uh, you know an aircraft in a particular amount of time, right? Even the ability to assign the aircraft to a maintenance in, uh, maintenance engineer, inform him about a gate change, for instance, tell him what uh, uh, you know defects have been notified. What is it that he would need to, uh, you know, give him his checklist? All of this is currently paper-based. We are actually actively in the process of putting all of this on mobile tablets so that an engineer uh, can even draw parts from, from a mobile device. So this dramatically changes the business process and, and reduces the need for, you know, communication, which, which causes uh, enormous uh, uh, challenges. In summary, 
the business would be able to get one engineer to do more or per engineer get more productivity than is possible today. So that is a beneficial business outcome. Now, I can apply this to any and every function, operational function within, within the airport and within the airline, particularly in the operational area. Take a function like an aircraft dispatcher. Currently, if an aircraft dispatcher during peak time is handling X number of flights with mobility and communication, that X will definitely get multiplied by 1.2 or 1.5 or 1.8 or 2 in the future, simply because information availability on, in real, on, in, you know, on a real-time basis would help him to plan and act faster and better. So, so you know, if I, if I was, again, to share an example, typically there are 35 to 40, uh, uh, you know, milestones that need to be uh, addressed, baggage loading, catering, fueling, uh, check-in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, before, an, before a flight takes off. A flight taking off on time is of, of huge offense to an airline because, if, you know, delays cost us huge amounts. And the ability of a flight dispatcher to get a flight off on time depends on the availability of real-time information. Even today, in a lot of airports, and for a lot of airlines, it's paper-based. Mobility has the potential to enormously change that landscape. And in some cases, it has changed that landscape, you know, for the early movers. So that, that, is, that is one dimension, uh, uh, John, of how it can change. If we focus on the consumer, and I think that is the point I was trying to illustrate earlier, the consumer we are dealing with, the consumer of the future, is a digital native. You know, he is not part of the furniture like I am. You know, I've been too long in the industry. I'm a digital. But today's, guy, today's person is a digital native. For him, you know, using his, his mobile devices or his, his tablets is second nature. So the entire gamut of how we deal with customers or consumers or passengers in all its dimensions it is going to dramatically change. And that is where I had raised that question of why would you design an airport five years from now with, you know, common use? Why would you even bother about something called a second counter? I completely agree. Very, very good point. Um, I think we're, we are a little bit over at this point. So I think um, I'll, I'll pass on the question. <laughs> okay. Okay. J uh, I just add on very quickly. Uh, again, totally agree with Srini. We will have to build in new processes from ground up, and not just for the airline. I think it's also for the service provider. For instance, uh, if you, you talked about satellite uh, availability uh, on board, there has to be a model where the, the cost is passed on to the customer. Uh, similarly, in distribution, we have to come to a model where the cost of distribution is going to be borne by the customer. And uh, uh, unless we do that, uh, the advantages of that technology will not be realized by the airline, because ultimately it's about saving costs and uh, you know, bringing in efficiencies. All right. So with that, um, I think we wrap this one up. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Srini um, for, for bearing through this difficult process. Um, and I think everyone here appreciates you uh, sticking with this. Um, Alok, I'd also like to thank you, thank um, you. for your contribution here. And uh, we'll be around if anyone has any questions. So again, how about a big hand for, for our speaker. Thank you.